we're going to explore converting retirement savings to retirement income and how to increase your retirement income. Welcome back. This is Richard with Wisdom Investor. One of the biggest questions that people think about when they're planning their retirement is where will the retirement income come from? So we're going to take a look at how to convert retirement savings into retirement income and how to increase your retirement income. There's five main sources where retirement income comes from. So we're going to look at those five sources and also share some ideas on how to increase your retirement income. There's five main sources where your retirement income is going to come from. The first source we're going to look at is savings and investments. That would come from money you have put away in a bank savings account or money you've put aside from work savings like a 401k or maybe you have a personal IRA or money that you have transferred to an IRA from a previous job. According to the Transamerica Center for Retirement Studies, the median retirement savings for baby boomers aged 57 to 66 is $282,000. That's for a household. How much retirement income does savings produce? We're going to convert $282,000 median savings into income. Keep in mind, many people have saved more than $282,000 and many people have saved less than $282,000. That's a median savings right in the middle. We're also going to compare investing in a certificate of deposit versus a stock index fund. In this particular scenario, the person's age 65, life expectancy is 20 years. It's invested in a certificate of deposit earning a half a percent, which is the going rate. The withdrawal is going to grow 2% per year for inflation, and the person's at a 12% tax bracket. The $282,000 will convert initially to a withdrawal amount of $1,000 per month. And if we factor in a 2% per year inflation growth, after 20 years, the withdrawal will have grown to $1,472 per month. Let's take a look at the second situation where the money is invested in a stock index fund, earning 6%. The retiree is age 65 again, life expectancy 20 years. The withdrawal is going to grow 2% per year for inflation and the person's in a 12% tax bracket. The $282,000 savings invested in a stock index fund will convert to $1,600 per month initially. And after 20 years, factoring a 2% per year inflation increase on the withdrawal, the withdrawal amount would be $2,386 per month. Now, keep in mind, we can't guarantee how fast investments will grow. We're using a hypothetical situation here. We're looking at the first source of where retirement income comes from. That's savings and investments. So we're comparing the growth of a certificate deposit to a stock index fund. Keep in mind, everyone has different tolerance levels on investing. If you're not comfortable investing in a stock index fund, then yes, you want to use a more conservative approach of a certificate deposit. In this case, the $282,000 median savings invested in a certificate deposit earning a half a percent would have an initial withdrawal income of $1,000 per month. The stock index fund, if it had a growth rate of 6%, over 20 years, you could start with a withdrawal of $1,600 per month. So you can see if you want to increase your retirement income, if you've saved $282,000 for retirement, using the stock index fund would increase your income in retirement. And just for additional comparisons here, if you had $500,000 saved, and it was invested in a certificate of deposit, you could start off 
with a withdrawal of $1,800 per month, and that would grow 2% per year last year, 20 years. If it was invested in a stock index fund with a 6% return over 20 years, you could start off your withdrawal amount at $2,900 per month, and you could increase that 2% per year in the last year, 20 years. If your savings was $150,000, you had it in a certificate of deposit earning a half percent interest per year, you could start off withdrawing $500 per month for 20 years, and that would also grow 2% per year. If you had it invested in a stock index fund with a 6% annual return, you could start off with your withdrawal at $850, increase it 2% per year for inflation, and that would last you 20 years. And you can see that by having a higher rate of return, you can generate a higher income throughout retirement. So how do we get a higher percentage return on your money by investing? There's four different ways here. One is receive dividends from investments. Invest in blue chip stocks for growth or capital appreciation. Look for the best certificate deposit if you don't want to invest in the stock market. And bonds, right now, I would not invest in bonds, especially long-term bonds. If interest rates go up, bond prices will go down. How much savings and income is needed for living expenses? If you have living expenses of $3,000 per month, your income coming in is $1,500 per month. That's going to leave a total deficit of $1,500 per month. You would need additional income source, either from Social Security or some other type of source. And we're going to talk about four other income sources for retirement here. Number two on our list is Social Security income. The average Social Security income for 2022 is $1,657 per month. Again, there will be many that make less and there will be many that will make more than that. How to increase your Social Security income. The number one way to increase your Social Security income is postpone when you take the Social Security benefit. The earlier you take it, the less your benefit will be. Here's a chart that shows your benefit at full retirement age, which would be either 66 or 67. In this example, your benefit would be $1,000 at age 67 if that was your full retirement age. If you took your benefit at age 62, the benefit would be reduced to $750 per month. I recommend that you view our video on how to increase your Social Security payments for additional information on increasing your Social Security benefits. Now, hopefully, Social Security is not your main retirement income. Now, if you have time on your side here, you want to try to save as much as you possibly can, somewhere in the range of 10 to 15 percent, maybe even 20 percent from your paycheck to build your retirement savings. Now, our number three source where retirement income comes from is real estate. I've listed eight different areas where you can generate income. Number one here on the list is rental property income. Number two is real estate investment trust. Number three is fix and flip real estate homes. And number eight, generate cash from your home equity. Our fourth area of where retirement income comes from is earning retirement income from working. The fourth source of income during retirement is working. Now you could postpone your retirement and continue to work another couple of years. This will allow you to save more money. You could also postpone your retirement and allow your social security check to grow larger. Now, if you do retire, start taking Social Security, you can also work part-time. Now, our fifth source of retirement income may surprise you, but it's actually from pensions. There's still one-third of retirees that get a pension. And if you're getting one, consider yourself lucky. Here's the medium annual pension benefit range. It can go anywhere from $9,000 per year for private pensions to up to $24,500 for a railroad pension. 
Now, one of the most important things in building your retirement income is building as large of retirement savings as you possibly can because retirement savings equates to retirement income. And of course, building your Social Security as large as you possibly can. That means either working longer, of course, making more money that'll build your Social Security to a higher balance or waiting to a later age before you take your Social Security. I want to thank you for watching here today. If you have any questions, leave your comments.